This is another brief talk on my book, Point Blank, published by the British Film Institute and their series, BFI Classics. I've talked earlier about why I like Point Blank so much. I've also talked about Lee Marvin's acting uh, to a certain extent. Here I want to talk more about Lee Marvin's acting in particular, his minimalism, which I did address earlier, but now his minimalism in connection to the shaping of the film script. It turns out that uh, he and John Borman had to work on the script together. Uh, while rehearsals were going on, the script was still in process. So often Borman, after he would receive pages from the screenwriter, Alex Jacobs, would go to Marvin's house in Malibu. This is 1966. And over several drinks, he and Marvin would discuss how each scene should be filmed. In particular, in Marvin's case, how each scene should be pared down. Marvin was very much a proponent of saying as little as possible to convey the energy of the scene. Borman really relished these times together with Marvin and spoke very highly of Marvin's imagination, his ability to think metaphorically as opposed to verbally. I'm going to show a very brief scene here which gives an example of uh, how one of Marvin's suggestions to Borman turned into a key scene in the film. I'll discuss this scene in some detail, and in the course of that discussion, I'll talk about Marvin's particular brand of minimalism in comparison to the minimalism of famous male, white male actors of his time, Clint Eastwood, Steve McQueen, to a lesser extent, Charles Bronson. And then I'll talk about other forms of minimalist acting in more recent cinema, in particular in the films of Jim Jarmusch, and how this minimalism also differs from Marvin's. Here is the scene. Let me set it for you. At this point, um, Marvin, who is seeking out his wife, who has betrayed him, his wife betrayed him with his best friend. The best friend shot Marvin after a robbery that he and Marvin undertook together. Uh, the friend named Mal took all the money and left Marvin for dead. It turns out Marvin did not die. And early in the film, we see him finding his wife, Lynn, played by Sharon Acker, um, and trying to find out from her where Mal is. The scene that I'm getting ready to show um, takes place right after M Marvin, um, Walker in the film, has burst into Lynn's apartment and he's rushed into the bedroom thinking Mal will be there. And Walker unloads his 45 Magnum into the bed, six shots. Uh, and in shooting, each shot leaves a black burn mark on the white bed. He recoils in shooting in a pronounced way. After this, he walks into the living room and sits down beside of Lynn, again played by Sharon Hacker. Walker Reese isn't here. He's gone. Three months ago. Gone. Cold. Moved out. Walker. I'm glad you're not dead. It's true. I really am. You ought to kill me. I can't sleep. I haven't slept. Keep taking pills. 
dream about you. How good it must be being dead. Is it? No. No, I can't. I never had the courage. This payoff, I guess. I don't know where he is. I really don't. All right. In rehearsals for this scene in Marvin's Malibu home, he and Acker were running lines and during one um, iteration of this, Marvin simply decided not to say anything in return. So Acker asks the questions that normally Marvin would answer. That's how the scene was written. But in response to Marvin's silence, she simply answers the questions herself. So what does this tell us? What does this do for the scene? Well, we, we see Marvin, first of all, um, empty out his bullets onto the table. According to Borman, this was a sign of his impotency. He ran into the bedroom and he shot his bullets. He hit nothing with his bullets. Again, suggesting he's impotent, that his gun, normally a symbol for a phallus, uh, is unable to do the damage that it is meant to do. And emptying out the bullets here is a kind of post-coital sign of his exhaustion. And his lack of speech here, again, according to Borman, is a kind of post-coital exhaustion. But in this case, it's exhaustion and exasperation that comes after a failed sexual encounter, metaphorically speaking, of course. So we see Marvin here acting how? He holds his gun, his empty gun, um, over his knee, uh, sort of highlighting the fact that his gun is empty. It's, it's out front for all to see. And he leans back in exhaustion on the couch, and he is acting solely with his eyes. He is not utterly motionless. His eyes are, are flitting a bit, suggesting an anxiety. Um, this is what I would posit is the key to Marvin's mineralism. Uh, he tries to act less with word and more with gesture, and in fact, with as few gestures as possible. He is an actor who values stillness. He isn't moving around much. He isn't fidgeting much. All that really is animated in Walker during this scene is his eyes. So he's acting with the eyes, the eyes showing a vulnerability and a fear uh, behind this stoic mask that his face is making. And this ability to suggest vulnerability with great subtlety is, to me, what makes Marvin such a brilliant actor. If you think of actors during Marvin's time, Steve McQueen in, say, The Getaway, or more um, appropriately in this discussion, um, Bullet. This is an actor who does not like to speak in front of the camera. McQueen was famous for, like Marvin, trying to pare a scripts down to their essence of gesture, trying to say as little as possible. I like Steve McQueen as an actor, but in my mind, there's something slightly affected about his stoicism. He, he looks around a lot. Uh, he... he he works really hard to suggest a kind of you know, repressed anger in some cases or repressed love in some cases. Um, but he, he actually does a lot with his face, uh, more so than Marvin. Um, so I think on, on the one hand, McQueen's trying very hard to be masculine in a very traditional way. The idea of the kind of stoic uh, frontiersman who, a man of few words, 
who acts with his fist or with his gun. That's very much in McQueen's line, both on and off camera. Um, but also, he, he wants to suggest, a, again, a, a kind of subtlety or nuance to this Man of Few Words character. But he does it with a lot more sort of facial business than Marvin. Clint Eastwood, also acting around Marvin's time. In fact, Eastwood, for his Dirty Harry films, borrowed the, the 45 Magnum idea that um, Marvin used. Marvin wanted to use this gun because he thought it would be a parody of the, the, the phallus. The idea that this man who is impotent is using such a big gun uh, just highlights his, his lack of potency at this point. Um, Eastwood seems to be not much interested in expressing vulnerability. Um, his, his quietness in the Dirty Hair films and in the early Leone films uh, to me seems more in the line of I'm a, I'm a man who doesn't say much and that's a mark of my, my masculine vigor. Um, the idea for him and for McQueen that language uh, is a sign of slickness, uh, inauthenticity. Uh, words are not the same as things. Things are connected with actions. We'll see later on in this film, point blank, Marvin using his deadpan acting uh, for the purposes of comedy. Um, Later in the film, it's almost as if Marvin's character, Walker, is aware of the extremity of his stoicism. And when he meets the character, um, Chris, played by Angie Dickinson, she mocks him for his uh, ostensible toughness and gets under his skin, quite literally, and sort of teaches him how to flirt a little bit. And that's one of the great joys of this film, is seeing this character starting out in this scene, which is, occurs in the first 10 minutes of the film or so, starting out being so uptight, so pent up, and there's some release of some of his um, emotions later in the film, again, because of Chris, who's actually the sister of Lynn um, in, in, in the film. I would say that Jim Jarmusch was brilliant in his use of deadpan acting for purposes of comedy. Uh, we can see, uh, for instance, in a film like Dead Man, uh, where Johnny Depp uh, says very little, and the deadpan is funny. Same with Forrest Whitaker in Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai. Adam Driver, Tilda, Tilda Swinton uh, are also exemplars of Jarmuschian deadpan, where there's a gap between what's going on, which is tumultuous, chaotic, strange, and the character's reaction, which seems indifferent. And that gap between expression and event, which is the essence of deadpan humor, uh, very much characterizes uh, Jarmusch's uh, comedy. Uh, interestingly, Jarmusch was a gigantic fan of Lee Marvin. Uh, I think at a certain point he, he started the Lee Marvin Club with some other directors. And in Deadpan, I'm sorry, in Dead Man, uh, two of the lawmen after uh, William Blake are one is named Lee, one is named Marvin. So I think that Lee Marvin's acting very much influenced Jarmusch's, uh, the actors, the kind of acting Jarmusch wanted to cultivate in his films. I think Keanu Reeves recently uh, in. John Wick um, uses the deadpan to comic effect. He used deadpan in The Matrix to less comic effect, but I, I believe that the John Wick character as he exists now is, is very much in the tradition of Lee Marvin. Uh, again, more on the comic side, less on, on the serious side. Ryan Gosling goes for a very Marvin-esque performance um, in Drive. Uh, says very little and tries to really express gesture, um, express emotion only with gesture. I think he does a fine job in that film. Uh, Gosling has a larger register as an actor, as he showed recently playing Ken. He's a brilliant comic actor. Um, but I think his acting style in general is understated is in, in Marvin School. So there it is. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Marvin's acting, mainly focusing on his minimalism, uh, focusing on how his acting style actually shapes the script for Point Blank 
and then focusing on how Marvin's particular form of minimalism uh, compares to some of the actors of his own time and to some actors closer to our 